Welcome. Today we're going to do Parshas Matos. <coughs> so the Parsha says like this: By Dabar Shem Al Moshe Leimar, the Ben Shlom told him, "Nekoyim Nikmas Bnei Yisrael Meisam Medyanim." You should take revenge on the Medyanim. Achar to Yosef Al Amecha. Afterwards, then you will die. So Rashi says, "Meisam Medyanim v'loy Meisam Yovim." Not from the Mayavim. Why? Why not the Mayavim? She Mayavim nechnsul davar machmas yira. There was over here, there was an alliance between the Mayavim and the Midyanim against Kal Yisrael. So the Mayavim only did it because they were afraid that they're going to dis- that they're going to destroy them or um, pillage. Shlei nemar el al tizke b'malchama avam Midyanim. The Midianim got involved in something that had nothing to do with them. So therefore, he should destroy the Midianim. But the Mayavim, they were motivated by self-defense, so then, uh, you know, don't destroy them. That's one shot. Dover Acharashi says, Because Mayav is going to result in um, two prejudice toivists, Amon and Mayav, Rusa Mayaviyav, Amon and which is the Gemara in Bavakama, Daflamet Ches. The Gemara says that Moshe Rabbeinu had a Kalvachimer. Do you want Ma'am and Yon and Shabbat Lazarus and Moyav Armat Torah? Sorry, some and Yon and Vakisa Moysam. Moyav is a Kalvachimer that you should destroy them. Amalek Hashbachul, no. Loikish Allah Badai, Tchallah Badati. Your cheshben is not my cheshben. Shtei pray the stovus yeshlo moitzimem. Rusam moyavia v'namana amoynes. Therefore, that protects amana moyav because of rus and nama. So Rashi has two reasons. One because they got involved because they were afraid, and the second because of rus. Now back in Pincha it says like this. First time he says this. You should uh, attack the Midyanim and uh, smite them. <laughs> it's over there, Rashi says. Why? Because Rus is going to come out. So in Pinchas, Rashi only says the second time because of Rus. Why doesn't he say the first time that Mayev was only more concerned about self-defense? Why over here does Rashi say both times and before Rashi says only one time? The first time that there's a tzivu to attack Midian. Here there was a tzivu and here it was right now. Also there are high masks Achat Yosef al Amecha. What does that have to do with Achat Yosef al Amecha? Why is Moshe's Petira connected to the Mucham of Midian? It's Masha from the Pasik that you should uh, you should conduct a Mucham against Midian, and then you'll be then you'll be Nifter. So yeah, apparently that there's a difference between two Tzivuyim. You also find there's a difference that before when he told them Tzorayim and Midianim. He didn't say anything about. He, say, he, he didn't say anything about anoshim. Here he says, <coughs> You should get anoshim. Anoshim means great people, tzaddikim. Rashi says, anoshim tzaddikim. So for here he talks about tzaddikim. Before he doesn't talk about tzaddikim. So apparently there's a big difference between four and here. Before he's talking about um, about a danger. That they're they're dangerous. They're they're people. They're your enemies. They want to destroy you. So you have to fight against them because they want to destroy you. Over here he's talking about something else. Over here, here he's talking about um, the kaim nikmas means for the kofet shemayim. Midian came and both of them and they they uh, they were machshel klal yisrael to be to serve the bal pa'ir to do Avaydah Zora and turn away from the Rabbi Nishladim. This is not, this CV over here was not because of a physical danger to Klal Yisrael, it's because they, they turned Klal Yisrael away to Avaydah Zora. So it was a Pagi and Kovach So therefore, before, 
when it's talking about uh, the physical danger that you have from Midian and Moyev, but so what are you going to say that Moyev only did it for self-defense? But self people who are attacking you because of self-defense are also a physical danger. So that is not an answer. Why not Moyev? Because they were trying to defend themselves. If they're your enemy, if they're afraid of you, and they're going to kill you because they're your enemy. So what? I mean, Lamaisa, they're a danger to you. But uh, because of Rosa Mayavia, that's why you shouldn't do Maya. Mashenkin over here was talking about Kvayt Shemayim, so that's a different thing. Maya was really not out there to be to, to be Pagayan Kvayt Shemayim. Maya was out there for self defense, so therefore it wasn't such a Pagayan Kvayt Shemayim. Mashenkin Midion, Midion was coming here just to be. Uh, to, be, to turn Klaus Roll away from the Rabbani Shalom and lead them into Avodah Zorah. So for here, that is a reason. And it could be that's why over here, the Anoshim, why do you need yeah, any war? Why is that to be only Tzadikim? So it could be over here where the war, if the, if the purpose of this war was to be Noikim for Kvayt Shemayim, then maybe you need for the Tzadikim who are the Madrega that they'll be Leichem for Kvayt Shemayim. Where you're fighting for uh, survival, physical survival, everybody should fight. But once it's narrowed down, and this is what it is for Kvayt Shemayim, then it's only Anoshim. So it could be for the same reason that, 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 that the connection of Ptira, to have this Molchama, the Molchama to, for, to, for, 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 to defend and Binoikim for the Kvayt Shemayim could be for this Moshe was necessary. So therefore, the connection is that after you do this, then then you could be Nifter, then, then uh, later we don't really need this. Now later in the Pasha, the Bnei Godu Bnei Ruvain, they wanted to have um, the lands on the other side of the Ardain and uh, Gilad, and uh, these were very rich lands and they had a lot of sheep, and they wanted to settle over there, and that's where they should be. So they came to Moshe Rabbeinu and they said that uh, we don't want to go across, um, you know, we want to be here. So Moshe Rabbeinu got angry at them, and he said, you're going to demoralize Klal Yisrael. So, so they said, I'm going to go into the whole, most of they gave them. And they said, we will make corrals for our sheep. For tapenu, and we'll make cities, I guess, walled cities, for our children. We're going to go ahead in the in, in the in the vanguard to fight against to fight to conquer Israel. And if we conquer it, then uh, then we'll go back. So Moshe said to them, "Bnulachem orim l'tapechem." Said, "Okay, good." You're going to come and you're going to fight, but make cities for your children and gederis l'tzaneichem and corrals for your sheep. Keep your word. So he reversed the order. They said gederis l'tzaneinu gederis l'tzaneinu and then ormul tapenu and Moshe said fakert. So Rashi says chosem hoyu amamoinam yosem abnei v'nei seyem they cared more about their money than they cared about their children. First was taking care of the of their livestock, and then their children. This is wrong. First make cities for your children, and then worry about your livestock. So this is really a very difficult thing to understand. I mean, I mean, no matter how much people um, are greedy and need money, but would they put their children at risk in order to make money? I mean, how do you understand this? This is like, what kind of people are these? Then what did they want? They said, no, no, we're going to first take care of our sheep and then we'll take care of our children. What, how could you do this? So I think what the Pshat is like this. If you have flocks of sheep, then it's normal for the sheep to, to wander off and then you're going to end up, they're going to go other hills and other this, and but they're going to scatter and by the time you need them, they're all over the place. So Mela, you have to have a place to keep them. They shouldn't wander off. Children really don't wander off. 
children stay near their parents. They don't really wander off. Sometimes a child wanders off and ends up in the in a forest somewhere, a field. It's a crisis and everybody organizes search parties, go look for the child. It's not something that happens that a child should wander away from its mother or its caretaker, whoever it is. Children instinctively stay close. They don't just wander off. So what was the danger to the children? Why did they need aura for the children? So the Medjur says that when they came back from the Muhammad, because they found that the children, were maga- they had blurious, they had long hair in the style of the, of the pagans, because there were still some, some pagans around in, in these lands. They were not completely uh, you know, eradicated. And those pagans had an influence on the children that the children ended up wearing uh, ponytails, or I don't know what they were wearing, blurious, they had blurious. So the, the danger to the children was not a physical danger. It was a ruchniyazdika danger. That they would be, uh, they would be uh, susceptible to the influences of the remnants of the, of the pagans in these areas. So, these, so the Bnei Rufin thought, ruchniyaz, okay, we have to take care of the ruchniyaz. But, uh, you know, first we have to make sure that we, that, uh, we have Gashmias, we can, supp- we can, we can uh, support them and feed them and provide for them. That's what we have to do first. First we have to do this. Then, we'll t- of course, we'll take care of the Ruchnis and the children. We will. But first, the first things first, we have to establish, the, we have a business, we have the farmers going, we have the money, we have to, we have to house them and to feed them. And afterwards, we'll get them, we'll them, and we'll teach them, and, uh, and we'll take care of the Ruchnis afterwards. Moshe told them, no, it's not like that. The Ruchnis of your children is more important than the Gashmias of your family. The first thing you have to do is protect them. They shouldn't be susceptible to bad Ruchnizik influences. That comes before. Don't worry about your sheep. You lose some sheep, you lose some sheep. The children have to be protected. Their Ruchnizik has to be protected. Now, this Gemara in Brachas says like this. Gemara in Brachas, Davches. Gemara says like this. In the story of Negod and Meiruvain, they said, "Vayvoyev Negod and Meiruvain, Vayomru al Moshe v'Aloza Akayin, Atoros v'Divayin v'Yazer v'Nimra v'Cheshvan v'Lala." All these parts, Ashahika Hashem l'Fnei Yisrael. These are the lands. These are the, the cities that Hashem destroyed in front of Klal Yisrael, and they were able to conquer them. They want them. This is what they were saying. These are all places in Eivayyad, and they want to live there. Atoros v'Divayin. That's the first two that he mentions. So the Gemara says like this: Amr Avami, Loilam Yashme Yashlim Odom Parshayosav in Matzibur Shnai Mikra Vechatagum. A person every week should do Shnai Mikra and Echatagum. Vafilu at Torahs v'Divayin. Even at Torahs v'Divayin, you should do Shnai Mikra Echatagum. Rashi says why? Shein by Targum. Targum doesn't translate. Now, Tyson says, why don't you say Reuven B'Shemen? Tagum doesn't translate Reuven B'Shemen. So we know that Hattoros uh, V'Divayin doesn't translate it. Now really, if you look in the Tagum, in the beginning, where it says Hattoros V'Divayin, Tagum says, Mechalel to Malbeshta. Mechalel to Malbeshta. So he does translate it. So what does it mean, Hattoros V'Divayin? So he's probably referring to the end of the parsha, where it says, "Vayivnu b'nei God as divine v'yes atoros." So it's really, uh, it's not atoros of divine; it's the other order. But this is what he's referring to Pashtas as divine v'yes atoros. So Tagum says, "Yos divine v'yos atoros." He doesn't translate it. So the first time he says, uh, the second time he doesn't translate it. What is, so, so why doesn't he translate it? And since he doesn't translate it, you should learn it anyway. Now, we spoke about this a number of times. 
The Targum doesn't translate a name. A name is a name. Ruven is Ruven, Shimon is Shimon. Every name is a name. But what Targum does do is, if it says Kodesh, in the Pasuk it says Kodesh, Targum says Rekem. Why? Because the place called Kodesh today is called Rekem. I mean, the time of the time of Uncleus was called Rekem. The name changed. So therefore, you'll see Kaseder in Targum, he will give you the current name. He won't give you the name that it says in the Pasuk, because the name doesn't tell you anything. So what is, what is Kodesh? Or who's, who's Kodesh? You look on a current map of Eretz you don't see a Kodesh, but see a Rekem. So Targum tells you that this is talking about Rekem, and in those days, in the time of the, in the, time of the Torah, which is a thousand years earlier, it was called Rekem, but today it's called Kodesh, Today it's called Rekem. He did the same thing with uh, Diva and Atares. Diva and Atares apparently changed the name. The name at the time was called Diva and Atares Vedivine. It was Machalot and Balbeshta. It was called, excuse me, it was called Atares Vedivine. But in the course of a thousand years, uh, the name changed. And now it's Machalot and Balbeshta. Why did they change the name? I don't know. Why did they change the name of Kaddish? Why did it become Rekem? Things happen over the years. Maybe somebody gave money. Who knows? But <laughs> It changed. The name of the name, cha- name changed. So Targum says, beshta. This is the current name. So he's informing people that, that so if the name doesn't change, then he, then he tells people in his Targum the name that was the same. If it does change, then I'll tell you the new name. But, uh, so that's why he says, but at the end of the Parsha, it says, and he does not translate it. So at this point, it's not... It's not called, nobody knows what Diva in Atoris is. Those places don't exist anymore. And he doesn't say, So nobody knows what this is. So Targum really didn't do anything for people by, if the name is the same, so in his translation, he uses the same name. So he's really helping people understand what the Pasuk is saying. But if the name has changed, and he says the, the old name, which, hasn't, which is no longer used, and he just tells you, uh, and tells you the old name anyway. So what is he telling you? What have you gotten from the Targum? Nevertheless, the part of the Gemara says that you have to say Targum even though you get nothing from it. It's an obsolete name, which nobody knows where it is or what it is, and it doesn't tell you the current name, just tells you the old name, and that's why, uh, nevertheless, you have to Shlem Mikrovech Targum, even a Taurus Vodivon, which he doesn't translate. He doesn't, I'm sorry, he doesn't tell you the current name. So why, why Taka, at the end, does he not uh, tell you the current name? Why at the beginning does he tell you the current name? So I think like this. The, in the beginning they're talking about, they're saying these places were destroyed. These, there was, Atars of Divine were old Amori cities that were there in Avar Yarden. Atars of Divine. And he says they were destroyed. So he tells you that those, those cities that were destroyed, today they could, they've been rebuilt. Because after it was destroyed, Cloud Israel came and they, they took over the land, they rebuilt these cities. And today it's called uh, That's why he's telling you that. In the end of the Parsha, he's not talking about that these cities were all the Murray cities. It says, They built new cities on the ruins of the old cities and they called them Diva in Natores. So he's telling you the story of what they did. What they did, they didn't build Mla Mlabeshta Machalelta, they built Divan Vatares. But over the course of time, the name of these cities changed to be Machalelta Miabeshta. So over here he tells you what actually happened. They built two cities which they called Diva in Natores. And as far as people knowing what it is, well, you see from the earlier place, he already told you that that place today is called Mechalot Yabeshta. So it wasn't necessary for him to tell you that to enlighten you to what the, where those places are. Of course, we know what those places are. Of course, we learned it in the earlier Pasek. But at this point, he's telling you what they did. They built Divan Vatoras. That's what they did. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again next week.